welcome to my channel. Well, here's another Why Not Wednesday or whatever Wednesday, whatever I called it. Um, this is inspired by Warthog's video. He had, he's got a earlier case Bowie knife, the Davy Crockett one, and it and it got me to thinking about because I looked at it, and he got it from an estate, and somebody had taken uh, an old case Bowie knife like this, and never used it, and it got me to thinking about um, safe queens, and I never understood it really before. It was kind of like uh, when a kid gets a toy. And never unwraps it, you know. For a kid, that'd be hard to do. For an adult, they're usually doing it for an investment. And it got me to thinking about, you know, somebody makes a knife. Now, a lot of times, they don't care. They're, they're making a knife, and it's just to make a profit, or it's it's their job. You know, it's not it's not the same as a handcrafted one. You know, when it's factory produced. You know, it's just. Another piece to put together. I need more of these handles, you know. I want to make it look good, but it's not as personal as somebody building one knife up, you know, from the ground up. And I, I guess that's where I get the distinction on this, is that not all knives are designed to... Uh, I guess they're all designed to be used as a knife, but they can still do something even if they never get used. And that is, you know, like, I have two of them, all right? So the first one, I treated it just like I would any other knife, you know? I I threw it in the ground, I, I sharpened the edge, I used it, and I still do. I, I still use it. But when Toby and family sent me the second one, man, I, I don't use this one. Now... I don't use it in the fact of uh, of actually cutting anything. It's it's become more like art. I have it sitting up on the wall, and every day I see it just sitting there, and that does something. I mean, if you can get to the point where whatever you're into gets to the point where it's so valuable or it be, it becomes art, it it kind of I don't know. It get it gets beyond. I, I was gonna say it gets beyond what a knife was originally intended to do, but who's to say? You know, if that if that gives you pleasure to sit there and see that thing displayed like that, and you never cut with it, people might think later on if they look at it once you passed or something, they look at it and say, "Wow, he never used this knife. He must not have liked it much." No, it was sitting there being displayed on a wall. I saw it every day. That's the thing. If you get too many knives and you put them in a drawer, you don't get to see them very often, you know, unless you take them out and look at them and stuff. With this, all I have to do is glance up. The TV's off to the left. The wall's right there, and it's just sitting there on display. Uh, if I feel like picking up anything, I've got this one. The only difference is the color of the handle, really. You know, they're the same knife. So... I can understand how people would have something uh, as a collection because even this, you know, you, it's open to dust. You know, I, you know, if I, if I wanted to really preserve it, I'd put some cellophane over it, and I could still look at it, but it wouldn't get dust on it and everything. I'm not worried about that. You know, like as far as like handing anything down or collecting, it can help pay for my funeral cost or something. Oh, the government, I think gives me a plot for being in the military, but uh, anyway, it's it's all in, in what your intentions are, and I've come to change my uh, consideration about safe queen knives and, and knives where people are, they're just too valuable to use, and it doesn't necessarily have to be because of cost, it's just like the... Uh, demo knife that my father gave me in 1964 I can still use it for sentimental reasons and stuff every once in a while but 
why risk it if you're going to do something crazy, you know, with it, which I usually don't. But I mean, uh, when you've got a bunch of other lesser, less expensive knives that would do the same thing. So you kind of like, you put a knife in a different classification when it gets to become uh, an heirloom or a safe queen or too antique. You know, like you get a really old knife and uh, you, st you, know, you restore it or, or something like that. And you could still use it and carry it, but you've got a bunch of other ones. Well, I think I would still carry it and use it a little bit, but I'd, I'd baby it, you know? I mean, I wouldn't put it through really any hard task. And it's not just, it's not to say like, ooh, look how tough these old knives are. It's like you don't want to risk it, you know? If, if you destroy it, especially if it's something of sentimental value, um, you can never replace it. You can get another one maybe like it, but you can never replace that one. You know, the one that somebody, you know, of some meaning or something gave to you. It has something, they, they touched it, you know, or in some way. That's not the same with, you know, a, a copy of one. So anyway, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying on this one is <clears throat> I've, I've changed my mind on, on Save Queens. And this is only because I have two of them. If I wouldn't have gotten this... this one right here, it wouldn't be a safe queen. This one, I can still see the hilt sticking out, you know, from the bucket of knives that I've got because all around me I've got knives. I don't have to look very far to find, you know, a knife. And, and I, the reason for that is out of sight, out of mind. If you, don't, if you don't see them, you don't look at them, then in your mind you might know what they look like, but you don't. You don't have the actual thing, you know, to look at. <clears throat> so anyways, that's all I'm saying. Just a little ramble there about safe queens and um, change your mind about things. That's, that's a good thing about, if you don't ever change your mind about something, then you either it's really valid or you're just stubborn and you, you're not, you you uh, you refuse, you know. One is if science supports or facts support changing your opinion, then fine. You know, let's say for example, like um, you don't like spade blades or you don't like cotton samplers. You find no use for them. Stuff like that. Um, after a while, if you've collected a bunch of different stuff, if you've never used a cotton sampler or a spade blade, you have some bad memory from many years back um what's it gonna hurt to try it out again and see if if your former opinion is still valid you know because that's what i learned a lot about collecting traditional knives is um i found patterns that i'd kind of like skipped over before not really thought of much you know, like barlow's that's very common over in europe and even in america a lot of these I never really ran into them when I was a kid. And so as you're collecting, you look at them, you're like, ah, eh, it's just one of the, a bunch of other things. Then I started getting into the novelty knives and, you know, their bar lows and stuff like that. And I went, wow, this, these are fun and inexpensive to collect and useful. You got, you know, useful blades on it. So because I changed my mind about things, just like I said, you know, when I was looking at spider cone knives for the longest time, I saw them when they first came out. And I looked at my, oh, that's weird with that hump and a hole, you know? And my bias is like, odd appearance. I never handled one, I never picked one up, you know? It's just, it just looked weird. And when I got a Spyderco uh, Delica, it all came, I understood it. It was ergonomics. And after that, it didn't look so bad. If it, if it performs well, you can forgive the looks, you know? If it, if it turns out to where it, it's not that great looking, but it performs well. Then who cares about what it looks like? It's not, it's not a beauty contest. Anyway, I've rambled on too long. Thank you for watching, and have a nice day.